Over the past few weeks, I've been on a bit of a mission to make the easiest Autumn Leaves guitar arrangement ever. I'm keen to know what you think of the version we'll go through today. I've tried every arranging trick in the book to keep this fingerstyle version as easy as possible. Feel free to skip ahead to this section of the video to get a slow play along with notation and tab. Plus stick around till the end for some tips on how to make this arrangement easy on the fingers as well as links to some other videos that'll help you out if you're new to this kind of thing. Let's have a look at the full speed version first so you can get a sense of how this Autumn Leaves guitar arrangement will sound like once you learn it. Alrighty, so grab your guitar, now let's do the slow playthrough where you'll see the notation on the screen with the guitar tab. Okay, so let's go through a few tips to getting this Autumn Leaves guitar arrangement under your fingers. The first thing you'll notice is that speaking of fingers, I'm using them in my right hand. Uh, this is a finger style arrangement. You'll find this a bit difficult to play with a pick. So definitely, it'd be good to brush up on some... some finger style techniques. And if you see the video description below this video, there's some extra videos that I've recorded on some great fingerstyle um, exercises and tutorials that you can get stuck into to build this technique into your plucking hand. The other thing that you may have noticed about the arrangement is that I'm using a lot of what's called jazz bar chords. So jazz bar chords are like this, where I'm using my often my third finger or my second finger. You can see that there's a bar being held by the second finger there. To, uh, to bar the notes. Now, this isn't as common in, say, classical guitar. You don't often see that sort of thing, but it's very, very handy for jazz chords. 
And so I will briefly touch on this as to how to play these, but I have got a much more uh, detailed video on this technique that you can find in the video description as well. Let's have a look firstly at bar four of the arrangement. So if we play from the start. If we get to bar four here, It'd be good to place the jazz bar chord at that point, and you can see in the notation I'm indicating to bar with the third finger the top three strings on the seventh fret. Okay, so it's really not, it might feel a bit unusual to do that, but it's actually quite natural, I think, for um, the position of a guitarist left hand to play with a flattened third finger like that. So you, you simply just sort of push the, roll the hand down so that the third finger is more flat rather than upright like this. Okay, so it's very much to do with the position of the whole hand, not just the fingers. Just experiment playing with that bar uh, there. Now if we keep playing, if we get to bar six, that's where there's a second finger uh, jazz bar. So you can see my middle finger there is barring the top three strings this time with my first finger just uh, on the fourth string there. Okay, now my knuckles can go back quite a long way compared to other people I've noticed. So I find that chord pretty easy. You might find you just, again, it's a case of getting used to it. Uh, if you've got arthritis in your hands or something like that, you might find this quite difficult. So never strain yourself. So you should just um, practice this chord a couple of times each day until your fingers get used to it. Now, as alternatives, you could always get rid of that bar if you really need to. So you can say, just get rid of the middle second string there and do some sort of picking pattern like that. So essentially you can rewrite the arrangement if you want to avoid playing a chord like that. You could play it like that, I guess. But when you've got all four fingers for a chord like that, it can get very clunky. So uh, you might find it's actually easier in the, in the long run to play it just with a bar like that. And then you can play different notes on top with your fourth finger. So that's a little bit about the jazz bar chords. There's a few of them in the arrangement there. Um, so, but check out the other video where I go into um, jazz bar chords in a lot more detail. Now, in terms of practicing a chord melody arrangement, I often talk like this to my students, you know, like we're in a, um, in a dojo, right? Like it's like guitar martial arts. And so learning a chord melody arrangement is a bit like learning a Tai Chi set. I used to practice Tai Chi in my university days and the, the teacher had a very simple approach, but very, very effective where it was simply just learn one move at a time. So perfect the first move. And then once you've got that one, then add the next move and then wait till you can do them one after the other really well before going to the third move and sort of just building it up one move at a time. Now, learning any classical guitar piece or jazz arrangement like this is exactly the same process. Because there's a lot of different things going on in both hands here, you've got the finger style in the, in the right hand, the uh, fretting the chords in the left hand with all the intricate movements, there is a lot going on. So don't overestimate even just a couple of bars could potentially take a whole practice session to get right. Um, but put those foundations in really solidly and you'll find that in the end it's much quicker to practice like that rather than glossing over everything and trying to learn it as quick as you can. Now keep in mind that you can always rewind this video to the slow playthrough section and even loop it or slow it down with the YouTube player to slow it down even further and just practice each little part at a time, the, the notation and the tab is on screen there, but if you did want a PDF so you can print it out and put it on your music stand, then just look at the link at the description below and you should be able to get a copy of that there. Another tip for this arrangement is I want you to think about the phrasing and the melody. Now, as you notice, when I was playing this with the metronome in the slow version, I actually struggled with the arrangement a bit because it feels a bit jarring to go to each of those accompanying chords like this. See how it's it's hard to, the music's not breathing. The great thing about playing on solo guitar is that you have the opportunity to put breaths and phrasing and things like that into the music that uh, you often can't do when you're playing with other people because you can, it's just subtly shifting the rhythm around a bit, which can not only sound a lot better, but it can also make the music 
um, uh, much easier to play. It's much easier under your fingers when, uh, when you're putting those little breaths in. I'll show you what I mean. So I can phrase it like this. See, I exaggerated that quite a bit, but could you hear how when I put those uh, on those chords before moving to the next bit? It, it, the music kind of, it, it felt like it had more breath in it. It was, it was more alive. So, um, and it was easier to uh, hear each melodic phrase through putting those small little um, breaths or phrase marks in. Okay, so, so that's the first thing with the melody. And the other thing is make sure that you can hear the melody above the accompaniment. Okay, so the melody is this. Okay, I'll just put the bass line in there as well, but you could hear the melody on the top there. Now make sure you don't do this. See how that clouds the, the melody? It's like the mixes. If I'm on a mixing desk, like if I'm a sound engineer and I'm playing with the levels, it's like the accompaniment is up too high. I've got to turn the level down on that. Make sure the, the melody is up at a nice level and the accompaniment is softer. That's a whole other aspect to playing arrangement it's, is getting the mix right between each of the voices. So like this. See how it sounds like there's more than one guitar playing at once now. I can hear the nice clear melody line and the accompaniment underneath. It's a subtle thing, but all these little subtle elements can really affect the overall outcome of the sound. Um, so it's paying attention to those fine tuned elements that can have a massive impact to your overall performance. Okay, now we've gone through the basic arrangement, let's have a look at how you can jazz things up a bit. All right, so to make this arrangement a bit more interesting, once you've got the basic one down, you could always try putting a bit of a Latin pattern into the finger style. If you want a PDF of this Autumn Leaves guitar finger style arrangement, click the link in the description below this video. Leave a comment with what you thought about this version of Autumn Leaves and what other songs you'd like me to put together as guitar chord melody arrangements. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, thanks for watching.